Hi and welcome to my video. In this video I'm going to be running through how to connect Zoom meeting registrations up to ActiveCampaign. And I'm going to show this because it's not that easy as you might expect. And actually it might be more common than you expect because I see a lot of companies who are using Zoom meetings to hold events rather than Zoom's webinar add-on because A, it costs money, and B, there's actually features of Zoom meetings that you don't get in Zoom webinars. But when you're using Zoom meetings, that comes with a dilemma, and that is connecting Zoom up to your other platforms. So what I've got here is a Zoom meeting registration page set up, and wouldn't it be nice if when I filled out the details here and registered, that would be marked in active campaign. So not only would my contact profile be created if it wasn't there already, but we could see in the activities that I had registered for a meeting. If you go into Active Campaign's apps and integrations, you'll see Zoom is there. However, it is marked with this Zapier tag. And what that means is that Zoom isn't directly integrated with Active Campaign, but you can do it with Zapier. However, I'll throw another hurdle at you. When you look at Zapier, so Zapier is an integration platform that basically connects uh, the data from two different apps to each other. What we'll see is that there's a new registrant trigger for webinars, but not for meetings. But I'm going to show you how you can get around that by using something called webhooks. So I'm going to show you what we're going to be setting up today. So here's the process as it looks in Zapier. And if you just ignore step number two, we can see this is a relatively simple two or three step process, we're going to catch a hook. And that's just a way of saying that we're going to capture some of the data that Zoom sends. And we're going to turn that data into a new or updated contact in active campaign. And if you choose, we can also create a tracked event in active campaign. So at its most simplest, it's just this one and this one, a simple two step process. But we can also add this on as well. I'll explain all of that in more detail as we go through the construction of the Zap. So the first thing is we're going to set up the Zap and the catch hook step. So I'm going to go to Zapier, I'm going to make a Zap, and I'm going to choose Webhooks by Zapier. So you'll see that it has a little premium tag. So that will mean that you'll need a paid version of Zapier in order to use this feature. However, you can use the free version of Zapier to test this out. And I'll show you what testing means. But basically testing means you can see it in action without actually having this automation running. So I'm going to click that. And I'm going to choose the event to be catch hook. Now when I continue, it's going to give me this. And what I'm really interested in is this URL here. Now basically what Zapier is saying is, here's the URL where we want you to send data to. And so the idea is that Zoom is going to be firing out some data, and Zoom will need to know where to send that data. And so it will need this URL. So. To set up that, we need to go into Zoom. So I've got Zoom here. When you're logged in, on the left side here under Advanced, there's something called the App Marketplace. And you'll come to this screen. Now you want to click Develop and Build App. And it sounds scary, but it's actually not that crazy. We're not going to be building a full-on app. We're just going to tell Zoom to start sending out some data. So you're going to click JWT, and uh, I've already set this up before, but in your case, you'll need to create. I'll put a link in the video notes on how to set that up, but basically you'll end up with something that looks like this. You'll have these various uh, sort of things set up on the left, uh, and the main thing that's important for us is that event subscriptions are toggled on. And basically what you see here is uh, an entry that's saying that Zoom is sending out data. So you can see I've already created this one before. I'm going to recreate it for you now. So I'm going to add a new event subscription. I'm going to call it test Zoom registration. 
And the important thing here is now we have to add what's called a notification endpoint URL. So here finally is where that URL we saw in Zapier comes into play. So here, click copy, they'll copy it to your clipboard, and then back in Zoom, paste it into that slot. Uh, now, so we've told Zoom to send the data to this place, and next we're gonna add an event type, and that basically means we're gonna choose what events we're sending to that place. And so we wanna choose when somebody registers. Here we go, meeting registration has been created, and click Done. Now I won't cover it in this video, but you can see that there are plenty other events that you can be looking at. So another one that could be really interesting is capturing uh, meeting attendees for registration events because when people attend Zoom, they use a unique link which is tied to them, which is tied to the email they use to register. So not only can you capture meeting registrations into ActiveCampaign, but you can also capture attendees and all sorts of other information. But we're just going to keep it simple, just registrations. And when you click Save. Fantastic. So now we know that whenever somebody registers in Zoom, it's going to send some information over to Zapier. So I'm going to jump back into Zapier and I'm going to click continue. I'm going to leave the rest of these as they are. Now we come to the testing phase. So test your trigger. If I click this now, we couldn't find a request. So Zapier wants to be able to look for this happening recently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that meeting registration page and I'm going to send in a registration. I'm going to register. Okay, so I have just registered in Zoom, which means there will now be fresh data for Zapier to look at. So if I go back into Zapier and I test the trigger, I can see now that Zapier is pulling in data. So here's all the data that Zapier has been able to pull from that. So we can see that it was the meeting registration that was just created, and we can see that uh, as was on the meeting event page, the topic is called Jacob Zoom Test, and the first and last name match up. So we can see this is the right data. This is great. This is a good start. So from here, I'm going to click Continue, and then I'm going to look for Active Campaign. Uh, so you can see just quickly, we've set up the trigger now. We know the data is coming in from Zoom, and now we want to do something with that data. So the first action is going to be active campaign. It's going to be create and create or update a contact. Now I'm I've already set up active campaign and connected it into Zapier before, so I can just click this. If this is your first time using active campaign with Zapier, you'll need to authenticate your active campaign account. Okay, now this is the fun part. So any steps that are labeled as required will have to fill out and the rest are optional. We know we need an email address and that's because Active Campaign needs an email address to be able to map this action to somebody in your Active Campaign database. So what I can do is I click that and what I'm what Zapier is showing me here is all the data that was pulled in from that meeting registration that we can use. So I don't see the email yet, I'm going to click show all options. And here we go, I can see that registrant email can, is right there, I'm going to click it. And you can see that it's popped into that field. Uh, now I'm also going to put in first name and last name. Just like that, just using the fields that are from the, from the what's called the payload that Zoom delivered. Now, just as a quick note, Active Campaign in this case is doing create or update contact. So what's going to happen is that it's going to operate using the email address. If it doesn't see an email address in Active Campaign, it's going to create a new contact with these details. If it does see somebody in Active Campaign, it's going to update them with any of the fields below. So just something to keep in mind that if there's any data in these fields, it will overwrite what's already an active campaign. There are ways around that, but they're outside of the scope of this video. So the main thing next is 
tagging. We want to indicate that this contact has registered for this uh, Zoom meeting, and there are two ways. There's the sort of the simplest method, which is a tag, uh, and there's a slightly more complicated method called a tracking event, which you may have remembered from when I showed the, the overall setup of this app. So either way uh, has its own advantages and disadvantages. So I'm going to show you how to do both. So tags is a little bit different from the other fields, whereas, whereas other fields will replace whatever's in that field for the contact if they already exist, tags will always be added. So whatever we add into here will get added to that contact as a tag. We don't have to worry about it deleting any tags they already have, just focus on adding tags. So in this case, I might want to make my tag uh, a multi-part tag. I might want it to show not only the name of the event, but also the date that the event is happening. So let's show all options. Now, first I'm going to use the search bar to look for the topic. Okay, I'm going to put uh, Zoom test, but actually, you know, as a prefix, I'm going to put Zoom registration the topic of the meeting, and then I'm going to add in the date, uh, that or the start time of the event. So I put that in here. It's going to create a long tag, but the tag does have all the information that we need for this very specific, for the specific Zoom event. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that, and I'm going to uh, go down to the bottom and click continue. Okay, now we've got another testing step. So this is kind of basically just telling you what it's planning to do. Uh, but the main thing we want to do is we want to test and review. So I'm going to click that now. And if I scroll up, I see we have a green banner, which is fantastic. That means that this worked, but let's go and double check it. So I'm going to look at my uh, contact and active campaign. Um, let me just refresh this. So I'm going to look down at my tags now, and here we can see the correct tag, Zoom registration, Jacob Zoom test, and the date that the event starts. Okay, so now we know that our automation worked, that it took the registration from Zoom and applied uh, the contact and the tag into active campaign. So we can click close. I'm going to go back to setup and uh, and feel free to stop here. Maybe this is all you need, but I will quickly show how to do a tracked event as well, because some people might prefer to do tracked events. So I'm going to look for active campaign again, and I'm going to look uh, for the action event to be tracked event and continue, choose my account again, continue. Now this is going to be a little bit different because what we need to do is go into active campaign and set up the tracked event that we want to track. So you'll see here down under event tracking uh, that we've got some information and previously I've already set up a bunch of events that I want to be tracked. So let's go about adding another event here. I'm going to go test zoom meeting ridge. I'm going to add that in there. Okay, I'm going to jump back into my zap. I'm going to see that I need a couple of things. I need the event key, which is found under the event tracking section. To choose an event name. So this is a drop down box. This is separate from the other fields because rather than typing it in, we're just going to look at what we already have. And I can see here, test zoom meeting reg. This was the one I just created. Okay. And if uh, I want, optionally, I can add an event value. So this is a little bit of extra information that we want to include. And so a good idea for an event would be to put the topic. So I'm going to chuck the topic in there. So not only do we see that the event was triggered, but we know that it was for an event that was called Jacob Zoom Test. 
And then lastly, although this is optional, it's very important that we do include the email address because that will assign the event to a specific contact in Active Campaign. So I'm going to continue and again I'm going to test and review. Now when I go uh, back to my contact, I'm going to see that yes, test zoom meeting reg was successfully triggered. Uh, and we can see the extra information. This was the name of the event. Uh, and if you see below that I have it again, that's because I've set this up before. So we can see that this triggered successfully. So now with that, all parts of the zap are set up. And again, you can choose which of these you prefer or do both if you like. So when you're ready, you can turn your zap on and that will mean that going forward, any new Zoom registrants will automatically be captured in Active Campaign. I create videos that are all about capturing engagement across platforms, specifically into email marketing programs like Active Campaign. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you soon.